Hey, Dream Drivers, welcome to episode 328 of the Dreams and Drive podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic of why self-preservation is not selfish. I think it's really important for us to talk about the importance and the need to preserve yourself along this dream driving journey. Before we get into today's episode, here's a quick word from today's episode sponsors. Have you thought about your car personality? What's your vibe? Do you like the classic fully gas-powered engine? Are you a best-of-both-worlds type, driving on battery power while keeping gas on reserve just in case? Or are you more inclined to choose a convenient hybrid ride? Whichever your vibe, there's a Hyundai Tucson to match and powertrain to get you there. Hyundai's 2023 Tucson lineup pairs the tech you want with sleek and stylish designs. They paid attention to all of the details, the seats, the dash, the available panoramic roof, you name it, Hyundai thought of it, all while making sure each trim has enough room to hold space for your grocery runs, festival nights, and tailgates. Okay, Hyundai, when it comes to your journey, Hyundai is there for every mile. Visit HyundaiUSA.com to learn more about the 2023 Hyundai Tucson. The 2023 Hyundai Tucson plug-in hybrid is only sold in California, Colorado, Connecticut, Maine, Massachusetts, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, Oregon, Rhode Island, and Vermont. Hey, 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 Dream Drivers. Welcome to another Solo Rounds Drivers Ed episode with your host, Raina Campbell. Before we dive into today's topic, self-preservation is not selfish, I want us to do just some quick housekeeping. Remember, if this is your first time listening, welcome. Dreams and Drive is a podcast that I started in 2016. We have over 325 episodes, so there's a host of guests, a host of topics, a host of information for you to learn. So after you listen to this episode, feel free to go back, scroll back into our catalog, and listen to some of your favorites. One of my favorites episode is is actually episode 145 with the talented Jennifer Lewis. She talks about her road to happiness, and I think it's just a episode that's a classic, so many gems. As you know, Jennifer has so much to share with our audience about what it means to put your dreams into drive. So definitely go check out episode 145 if you haven't. If you aren't already following us on social media, you can find us at Dreams and Drive on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And lastly, guys, I always want to make sure that we're growing our community offline. So if you want to join our email newsletter and get weekly email updates delivered right to your inbox just sign up by going to dreamsanddrive.com slash join that's dreamsanddrive.com slash join and wherever you're listening make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notifications every time we have a new episode all right guys so we're talking about the idea of self-preservation is not selfish as i mentioned on the onset of this episode i talked about this topic in very short detail on a raindrops in the morning video that I dropped on my Instagram page. So if you want to go and listen to that video, you definitely can. But um, I really wanted to talk about the idea of like, what does it mean to protect yourself and to preserve yourself? And I think the reason what really spoke to me and why I wanted to bring this up on the podcast again is because to give you guys an update... My son recently turned two, and I feel like my life has changed again. They say when you have a kid, like every age, every stage, you're learning your child again, and it's really all new all over. But listen, these terrible twos are definitely terrible in twoing me, right? I don't even know how to say it. Um, I'm realizing that motherhood, mommyhood, parenthood is just hard AF, right? It's really hard. It's really difficult. And I think there's this mental load that just shifts and changes a lot. Now that he isn't napping, I didn't realize, let me just preface this for anyone who has kids. And if you don't have kids, you may still be able to relate. Naps are crucial to your survival. When your kid naps, you're actually able to get some sort of break, some sort of mental relief in a way. And so when your kid is going through this stage where they're fighting their naps, they become a different person. And I'm always, I would want to say I'm the type of parent that's very calm, very understanding. Like I don't yell at my son. I really try to get on his level. But these past few weeks have really tested me. It's like, I want to be like, bro, just take a nap, stop fighting it. But I also have to remember that he's growing up and he's learning himself and he's changing. So we both have to just kind of adapt to this new 
Axel, but this new Axel is definitely new. He's testing boundaries. He's testing himself. I feel like I'm constantly trying to save him from not killing himself in the house, right? There's so many things that he's doing. And within this, I just feel like all my outside energy when I'm with him is devoted to making sure that he's all right. And I just don't have that energy for myself sometimes. At night, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch my show. I'm going to relax. But then I end up going to sleep because that's what I need at the time. And I feel like I have been so consumed with motherhood for these past two years. And although I've said I haven't lost myself, sometimes I do feel like I have lost myself. And it this conversation that I've been having with myself really made me think back to this Dreams and Drive Rain Drops in the Morning series or video that I dropped a few weeks ago, maybe a few months ago in the summer. And it just made me, you know, think of this conversation that I had with my my aunt. So if you haven't listened to it, the basic gist, the basic gist was like I was talking to my aunt. So I have one of my aunts. She's like 80 plus, but you wouldn't even tell. She looks like she's 50. She's one of my favorite aunts and she's just like a second mother to me in so many ways. So we were just talking like we always do. Whenever she calls me, I feel like we always end up having these like hour long conversations. And so I just said to her, Hey, auntie, cause I'd like to ask older people this in my life. What's the biggest lesson that you've, you know, you experienced that looking back now over the 80 years of your life that you could speak to. And her answer surprised me, but she basically said that, you know, Self-preservation is not selfish. And let me give you some context. So my aunt was, on my father's side, the first one in our family to come to America. She came here young. She had a baby that she left in Jamaica. She came here. She got established. She went to nursing school, established herself, brought her daughter here, and really built a life. And she was the matriarch of the family and really brought over all her brothers and sisters and, you know, helped establish the Campbell family in America. And she just said that, you know, when she looks back at her life, she feels like she spent a lot of her life doing for others. And now that she's at this age, she just wonders, like, what did she do for herself truly? And, you know, I don't think she regrets what she did, but what she did or how she lived her life. But she's such a giver. And I feel like sometimes as givers, especially I feel like a lot of us dream drivers are givers. We like to see other people in our life succeed. We want to help. But at whose expense sometimes, right? And so when I hear her, this person that I've always looked at with admiration, I still admire her, but to hear her say, you know, I wish I had done more for myself, it really hit me because do we want, and I'm I'm saying this, like I'm 31 years old now, but you know, 60 years from now, 50 years from now, do I want to look back and be like, dang, I didn't do anything for myself. I didn't take any risk. I didn't pursue the dreams that I wanted to pursue. Of course, I know that my aunt definitely made accomplishments, but I feel like sometimes she was living through other people. And what she found doing a lot was helping others put their dreams into motion. Of course, that's good, but I do think there is some sacrifice in there. And sometimes we don't do all that we truly want for ourselves. And so just hearing her say that to me, she's like, self-preservation is not selfish. Sometimes you have to choose you. Choosing you is okay. And a lot of us, especially those who listen, who are listening, I know I have a, a big immigrant population where we're first generation, second generation Americans. Like we're told to put our family first. We're told to put others first, right? Community first, culture first. But there are times when you have to put yourself first and it has to be something you're okay with because sometimes the only way that you can help others is by helping and investing in yourself. And if your cup isn't full, how can you fill somebody else's cup? Literally, right? If you're operating from a half empty cup, if you're going to fill someone else's cup, you're only going to get them halfway, number one, and then you're going to be depleted. So, What is my call to you guys after hearing this, right? My question is, how are you preserving yourself as dream drivers, right? How are you preserving all that you've built, all that you want, your dreams? You know, I think it even starts with, I had an episode called, you know, Beware of Dream Killers. I think that's super important along the self-preservation journey. Just the idea that you are a dream driver, that you're putting something in motion, 
protecting that is super key. Protecting the dream is preservation. Hey, dream drivers. So I want to tell you all about this new Audible original you're going to want to check out. It's called Direct Deposit, What Happens When Black People Get Rich. And it's hosted by Chad Sanders, the author of Black Magic, What Black Leaders Learn from Trauma and Triumph. And he's also a TV writer of Rap Shit. So Direct Deposit explores what it takes to get rich and stay rich while black in America. For young black entrepreneurs, Direct Deposit is going to seek to answer the questions, what's money going to do for me? And what's money going to do to me? And I love that Chad shares his personal journey. He went from sleeping on a mattress on the floor in a cramped apartment to an early overnight success after Spike Lee signed on to develop one of his scripts. After becoming more and more successful, Chad has realized that his bank account might change, but the struggle remains. And that's what we got to talk about, right? Chad speaks to prominent black figures in American pop culture like Issa Rae, Gabrielle Union, and Sola Dad O'Brien. So I don't know about you, but this screams Dream Driver all over it, and I'm going to be tuning in. Visit audible.com slash direct deposit to listen now. Getting diagnosed with diabetes changes everything. Not just how you eat, but how you exercise, how you enjoy life, how you live. I feel like Walgreens just really gets it. From my local pharmacist, Sophia, always being so kind and encouraging, to all the expert resources and support with my meds, couldn't do it without them. When you need to talk diabetes, Walgreens is here. Start managing your diabetes at walgreens.com slash diabetes. Who wants to be doing that all the time? Like, I know that I don't, so it's definitely something that I don't think you want to do. And this whole idea of losing yourself is very, very true. Like, sometimes you can be operating and helping others and just out here existing that you don't even realize that you're losing who you are. You might look into the mirror one day and be like, who is this person? I know, like, with the change, like, motherhood, it might be more apparent. Like, all right, I've been taking care of this other being for the past two years It's been a life-altering experience. It's been a new experience, the pandemic, a job change, moving. All this stuff has happened, and you're just in survival mode. A lot of us are operating in survival mode, and we don't even realize it. And you have to sometimes get out of survival mode in order to have a full, clean optics on what's going on in your life and be able to say, like, what is it that you're doing that is contributing to you not being true to your to who you are. Are you giving yourself enough time? Like it was so funny. Um, just the other day, I was helping Axel do something, and I was on the floor, you know, rolling around with him, and I realized, oh, I'm a little bit tight. And then it made me think, oh, you haven't stretched in a long time. You haven't been active in a long time. Of course, walking to work is is active, you know, walking around doing that is active, but it made me realize, Raina, before Axel, you used to love fitness. You used to love, you know, doing in-home workouts, going to the park. I'm not a big gym person, so I've never been a gym head, but I like the whole idea of eating clean. I still eat pretty, you know, mostly clean, but where am I incorporating this thing that I loved in my life? In the summer, sometimes I would go walking, you know, going to our local lake and reservoir and walking around that, but I realized that here I am being achy and feeling like I can't stretch right, but that was never part of who I I was, right? So just thinking about this, like it's so easy for things to slip away from us and for us to just lose tiny bits. And it just starts as one small thing that can then bubble up into other things. And if we don't check it, if we don't center ourselves and say, hey, are we being true to who we are, our desires, and what makes us special? You can lose it. Five years could go past and I haven't stretched, haven't used my yoga mat in years. And I don't want that to happen. So you have to be really aware of it. And I think taking the time to just like write down, all right, what are things that you wanted to do? What are things you haven't done? What are things like that you hope to do? So for example, I used to be a big movie head and before the pandemic, you know, going to the movies every two weeks. And that's something that I want to get back into the habit of. Maybe it's not going to be every two weeks like how it was before because it's hard to get babysitters at night or whatever. But, you know, I feel like it's something that I can find a way to 
bring that joy back into my life. Because I do feel like when you're fulfilled beyond the things that you have to do, and I say have to do because I feel, to to me, it's like I don't think I have a, a choice. I mean, we all have a choice whether we want to be a parent, but it's not a choice that I'm putting out there. Like, parenthood is part of me now, right? But what are other ways I can fill my own personal cup and preserve myself? That will make me happy and bring me joy. So that's something that I wanted to share with you all. And then, you know, the other thing with this is, all right, we know self-preservation is not selfish. But at the same time, how are you committing to it? So it's easy for me to just say, all right, it's it's not selfish. You got to do it. But is there any accountability? Is there any commitment? Is there any discipline behind that word? And that's the big thing that for a lot of us busy dream drivers... It's not always easy to commit to preserving yourself. And honestly, sometimes it's easier just to put it off. It may seem totally crazy, but committing to yourself and holding boundaries for yourself is truly hard. It's hard because there's so many things that we're taught that we should be doing. Like, for example, your children should come first. But should they, right? This should be done, but should it? And these are all things that I'm just contemplating in my own life, and I know that you probably all are as well. So if you are, you're not alone. Like, finding that way to commit to it. And for me, I've always found having small goals, easy, attainable, things that make me a winner quick is a great way to keep that momentum going. So maybe it's me being realistic. All right, Raina, it's going to be really hard for you to do 30 minutes a day of exercise, but what if every morning before you got up, before you went downstairs, made Axel breakfast, you took four minutes to stretch. Do something on the floor by the bed, stretch out your back, have some alone time. That's easy. Four to five minutes in the morning, that's something that I can easily commit to and build a habit because it's something we have to train ourselves. It's not something that comes innate, right? Dream drivers, what's up? And I know we all are on the quest for the perfect beverage to quench our desire for refreshing. So here's the question. What have you always wanted to try? Is there something that has been a dream of yours, a flavor, a taste that you just really need to get at? Gold Peak Real Brewed is here to unleash your thirst for trying. Real Brewed Tea, Real Cane Sugar, Real Delicious. From Sweet Tea unsweetened tea, green tea, California raspberry tea, Georgia peach tea, lemon tea, lemonade tea. There are so many options to find what's best for you. And this summer, we need to try something new, try something brewed, because nobody wants to be dream driving with a dry mouth or thirsty. We need that fuel to be at our best for this ride. So take this as your sign to say yes, opt in, go for it. Because trying is what life is all about. Try Gold Peak. Hey, dream drivers, you know, life moves fast, but time stands still when you're with the ones you love. Savor the moment, big or small, with Starbucks ready to drink coffee. From bottled Frappuccino drinks to canned nitro cold brew, Starbucks coffee gets you ready for the right now. Starbucks ready to drink coffee is available now online or wherever you buy groceries. We're taught to look out, taught to protect other people. Are we taught to protect ourselves? So try giving yourself a small task that's committed to you, that's for you, that's for the preservation of you, and just do it and see how, you know, see how it pans out, see if it works well, see if, you know, you see any difference in your life after doing it. I don't know, but I really think that we have to start thinking about, like, what does it mean for us if we commit to this? Because on the flip side of it, right, People say self-preservation is selfish. Like they're not saying like what they should be saying is self-preservation can be life-changing. Choosing yourself, and I always try to like flip things. Choosing yourself, holding boundaries for yourself is actually very refueling. It's refueling and we're dream drivers. So we need that fuel. We need to be able to have something that's going to gas our cars and move us along this journey. Right. And I say that because 
You got to put the fuel in your car first or you can't drive anywhere. I'm going to say in a Jamaican accent, you can't drive anywhere, right? Sorry if that was horrible for any my true Jamaican borns who are listening in, right? You can't drive anywhere without gas in your car. So if you're not actively making sure that you're taking care, maintaining yourself, right? Just how a car needs an oil change every few months, every 5,000 miles, you need that too. You deserve that. And I think that's something I haven't talked about. Like you deserve it. And maybe it's part of all of us have healing journeys that we all are on. And sometimes not pouring into ourselves can also be something that we have to learn again and tell ourselves you are worthy of it. You are deserving of it. You matter. There is purpose in putting and investing into yourself as well. Others matter, yes, but you are the unique being. Your body, your mind, you are all you will ever experience in life, meaning like you are this vessel controller of your body. So it really does play such a huge deal when thinking about how we show up for ourselves. And the biggest thing I always say is like, you never know who's watching you. You never know who's looking at you and is being inspired and is being like, hey, this person shows up for themselves. And that's also inspiring me and giving me the confidence and the courage to do so as well, right? Every car needs a driver. And that's the thing that I want you to remember. Like, this dream driving journey is not for you to be a passenger seat and someone else is driving your dream. You are the driver of your dream. But with that, you also got to make sure you're maintaining your car, right? You cannot play a passenger role in your dream driving journey. Cars don't drive like that. I mean, if you have a Tesla, maybe, but we're operating on the old model of cars, right? (laughs) Until that changes. But even then with the Tesla, like someone has to program it. Someone has to kind of be there making sure everything's going according to plan. I don't 100% trust it. I have never driven in one as of yet. But you get where I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here is every car needs a driver. You are that driver. Put that fuel in your car first because you can't play passenger in your own dream driving journey because then you're on somebody else's. It doesn't matter. Even if someone's saying they're trying to help you, you have to take control of, of where what it is that you're trying to do and say, all right, guys, I got this, and I trust myself that I know where I'm going, and I can't do everything, right? Like learning to say no is a huge part of that, being like, I have some boundaries here. There's just some things that I cannot do and being true. And, not, and don't say yes when you want to say no. That's another big thing. Don't say yes when you want to say no because then you'll be burnt out and people will People will bring you into their dream driving journey if you allow them to. And I'll leave it at this. Um, What I'm learning sometimes is with people who are very talented and gifted in a lot of areas, people will see that in you. And they will call you into their, their dream driving journeys as they see fit. And what I'm finding where I am in this stage of my journey is you have to realize how you want to show up in other people's dream driving journeys. And it's not for them to define. Now, people will say, hey, like, you're so good at this. Can you help me do this? Or, you know, I really think you'd be great at this. Come do this. But listen, I'm telling you this from experience. If your heart, if your intuition is telling you to run, run. If you don't feel right going to something, don't do it because it's going to come back to bite you. And I've, I've learned that the hard way. And I mean, of course, there are some things that are just going to be great experiences and help challenge you and help grow you. But at the same time, I do feel like it's not right to say no and don't make pe- don't let people make you feel bad for preserving yourself and having your boundaries. All right, so that's really all for today. Um, I really like these solo episodes. It's really cool just to reflect on things. So if you guys have ever have topics that you want me to address or anything, shoot me a note. You can always find me. But first, make sure you're part of our email newsletter. So go to dreamsanddrive.com slash join. Because when I send out my weekly emails, you can always just reply to that. Give me your feedback. Send me whatever feedback you want. But I'm really looking for some episode ideas and having more of these solo driver's ed episodes to help teach us and just center us on certain topics that I think are truly important for all dream drivers to know and to understand. All right. 
So do that, number one. Number two, make sure you're following us on social media. We are Dreams and Drive across the board. So go ahead and follow us on social. And then lastly, share this episode. Help me grow. You know, Dreams and Drive is about to be seven years old in January. Can you believe that? So if you know somebody who needs a reminder that self-preservation is not selfish, text them this episode, send it to them, tweet it to them, email it to them. You can easily just go to dreamsanddrive.com slash 328, making it super easy if you want to direct someone how to listen to this. They can just go there. And if you're wherever you're listening to this, whether it be Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, YouTube, wherever, make sure you go and hit that subscribe button if this is your first time listening so that you get notifications and an alert on your phone whenever we have a new episode. All right, so I appreciate that. As always, dream drivers, keep dreaming, keep driving. And if you got into this part of the episode, that means you're a super fan or you truly enjoyed it. So listen here, I got one more thing for you. If you are someone or you know of someone who be who would be a great guest on the show, go to dreamsanddrive.com slash pitch to pitch me. I'm looking for a great guest for 2023, so please make sure to go there and pitch the show. I'm always looking at all the incoming pitches that we have, so we'd love to learn more about your story and why you'd be a great guest for Dreams and Drive. All right, keep dreaming, keep driving, and we will chat again in episode 329. Bye, guys. Dancing crew, trip for two. Nail the final interview. Game with Doug. Brand new mug. Come here, kid. Give me a hug. The more you want to do, the more we want to do. Boosters designed for COVID-19 variants are now available. If you've had your primary series, schedule an updated COVID-19 booster appointment as soon as you're eligible. Sponsored by Pfizer and BioNTech. I wanted to know why some people who get COVID-19 get it so bad. I found out it may be because they have a high risk factor, such as heart disease, diabetes, being overweight, smoking, and asthma. Even if symptoms feel mild, these factors can increase your risk of COVID-19 turning severe. So if you're at high risk and test positive, there are things you can do, like asking your healthcare provider if an authorized oral treatment is right for you. Learn about an option at treatcovid19.com. This message is sponsored by Pfizer.